Hey, it's Mike here at Hanson Fitness for Golf and today I'm going to take you through a mobility routine that you can do right in your own home that's going to do wonders for your own body and your golf game at the same time. All you're going to need for this is a chair and a golf club. So let's get started. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take you through each exercise or each stretch one time and then if you want to prolong it, you can do it two times or you can do it three times if you want to get more out of it. But it's designed to really work on the joints and the muscles that are most important in your body for your golf game. So we're going to get started with just a simple marching in place. So you're going to just lift your knees up and we want to get the body warmed up. We want to get the blood flowing. We want to get just moving just a little bit before we start stretching muscles. One thing with mobility and stretching is you don't want to just jump right out of bed and start stretching. Another good thing that you can do about stretching is you can do it for 15 minutes in the morning and you can do it for 15 minutes in the evening. And you don't necessarily have to go through this program all the way through. It's going to be best if you do, but if you don't have the time or you want to break it up into things that you feel like you need the most, that's a good thing. Okay, now that we've done about 30 seconds of stretching, we're just gonna, we're gonna do some butt kicks. So you're just gonna try and kick your butt with your heel. So you're gonna bring it up and back, up and back. And another thing that I wanna point out is, if you feel any aches or strains while you're doing this, just be smart and don't try and work through them. You can pause, you can stop. There's always variations or progressions for all the exercises. So once we've done that marching in place, done some butt kicks, now we're just gonna do some small arm circles. And here, you don't really want to go too high up above your shoulder joint. You just wanna go about even with your shoulders. So it looks like this. We're gonna do about 20 to 25 forward. And then we'll go 20 to 25 backwards. Just that way. That's good. Now we're just going to give ourselves a big hug. So when you hug, you're going to also squeeze your shoulder blades in the back. And you can see I'm going back and forth this way. So I'm alternating my arms. So one arm's going above, one arm's going below. Just like that. And at any point, you want to pause the video feel free to. I'm just going to kind of run through all the stretches and all the different things that you can do. So you might want to pause it because we're going to grab a golf club. So you can go grab a golf club and I'll wait right here for you. All right. So this is a good one um, that you could do before you practice or play as well. So what we're going to do is you're just going to grab the ends of the golf club and you're going to rotate. So you're going to turn your lower body, let your heels come off the ground on the opposite foot, let your hips turn. You're just gonna turn both ways. We're gonna do about 10 to each side. I'm not a real stickler for counting. I like to do things, do enough that you feel like you're doing a good stretch and you're doing enough, but you don't need to overdo it, but you wanna make sure that you do enough. There's not, a, there's not a magic number for really anything when it comes to, to exercise. So the next thing you're gonna do is go up over your head. And then from here, we're gonna, we're gonna lean this way. So you're gonna lean one way and you're gonna just let this whole side stretch out. Try and feel like you're pulling with that opposite hand and keeping this arm as straight as you can, coming all the way down this way. And then from here, we're gonna go back this way. So about a 30 second hold. This way, just stretching out that whole side. That whole side. And then about 15, 20, 30 seconds. And then now, what we're gonna do is you're gonna get into a driver posture so you're going to get a little bit of a, what's called you're going to hinge from your hips just a little bit let the arms come back here this way and then you're going to rotate so you're going to do that same rotation allow the heel to lift 
and feel like you're turning around the hip. So we're turning, turning both ways. Keep that stick. If you can keep the club, keep it behind your ears or just even with your ears. If you're having trouble getting it back that far, bend your elbows just a little bit so you can get it further back. But you want to keep this back so we're really stretching out the chest, moving back and forth. Just this way. All right. And now we're going to put the club in your right hand and then you're going to lift the right foot. And I know a lot of times when people do videos, things that you're looking the opposite way, they'll say like, oh, put it in your left hand. But just bear with me. Just put it in one hand and put the same foot that you're holding the club in behind your opposite knee. And then you're going to rotate your lower body, keeping the upper body square, and you're going to rotate the lower body around, around that leg. If you feel any pain or aches in this knee, you can do two things. You can stop or you can just put your foot out a little bit that way and that will allow the hip to move a little bit easier and not put stress on the knee. So we're going to do 12 of those and then opposite. Now just switch sides. So we're going to do 12 this way. One, two, really turning around that leg. And if you're a right-handed golfer, this is your trail leg. So this is the one you're loading on, on the backswing. It's a great stretch for your internal hip rotation. All right, so next thing you do, and I wanna make sure that I go in order. So I have them all written down here below the, the camera. So if you see me looking down there, you know I'm getting the next stretch for you so I don't go out too far out of order. So this one is a great overall activation. I love to get, even if I'm doing a mobility routine, I want to get the core and the glutes activated and the whole back side of the body because we're not using that very much. So what we're going to do is we're going to put our feet a little bit wider than shoulder width with the toes pointing out. And this is a five count exercise. So what you're going to do is you're going to reach forward. So you're going to reach forward for the ground. Let your knees bend if you need to. You're going to reach forward and from here you're going to squat. So that's number two. And then number three, you're going to push out on your knees. So you're going to push out on your knees, getting a good stretch inside the groin. And then number three, you're going to, four, you're going to take your arms up as high as you can, and then you're going to stand. So that's one. That's a five count squat. So we're going to do six of those or five more of those. So we're going to go down, squat, push out, raise up, stand. Good. That's two. We're going to squat, push out, arms up, and stand. Here we go. So we're going to go down, hamstring stretch, squat down, hip stretch, push out, groin stretch, up, activate the back, and then stand up. If you're having trouble, like your knees are coming up, your heels are coming up, um, just try and modify as much as you can. Go down as far as you can. But it looks like this from the side here. Down, push out, arms up, stand. And that by then, you've done the other one. So we're good there. We got six that way. Next thing we're gonna do is if you have a pillow or a, or a mat or some sort, we're gonna go down on one knee and you're gonna need your golf club again. So here we're going down one knee, we're going to use the right knee in this case. I always like to use the golf club for balance if you need to while you're getting down there. So what we're going to do first is you're going to squeeze the glute or the butt cheek of the knee that's down. So what it looks like from the side is if I had, so I have strings in these shorts, if I had a belt on. I'm going to try and get my strings or my belt buckle to come towards my chin. So I'm going to squeeze this way and then I'm going to, we'll call it thrust forward. And you're going to get a big stretch in the front of your thigh or hip flexor there. And from here, we're just going to hold it. We're going to hold it for about 30 seconds. So we're going to hold, squeeze. The hip flexors are one of the most important muscles to have mobile for your golf swing because it really controls the way the hips move. But 
the problem is, is they're always tight. And 98% of the clients I see here, they're tight. And it's just from sitting a lot. It's from people that sit, walk, everything we do, we're using the hip flexor. So we really wanna make sure that we get these stretched. So now that you have that same hip flexor engaged, pushed forward, we're gonna take the club. And if you have trouble balancing, you can always widen. If you widen this foot, it's gonna give you a little bit more support. But if you don't have to, I don't recommend it because you're gonna lose a little bit of the stretch. So from here, we're gonna squeeze, arms up this way, and then we're gonna lean away from that stretch. So what it's doing really is it's just, you're pulling everything in that side, and we're squeezing the glute, pushing the hip flexor, and you can even push this hip out just a little bit. We're gonna hold it for about 30 seconds. Again, guys, there is no magical number for as long as you hold a stretch. I've heard a lot of things. I've experimented with a lot of things. I like to hold a stretch as long as I can, pretty much. So there's some stretches that, that will hold for, while I'm talking, I'm gonna switch sides. So we're gonna switch, you're gonna switch hands. We're gonna do the same thing. So you're gonna squeeze the glute on the left side, push the hip forward. So um, what I was saying is, there's some stretches you can hold for one to two minutes, three minutes. Um, it just depends on, on your comfort level and if you're still continuing to get a stretch. There's different methods of stretching. There's static stretching, which is holding it for a long period of time, and then there's dynamic stretching. I find for my golfers is dynamic stretching is a lot better because you're also working on stability, and a lot of people don't have the time or the patience to hold the stretch for one to five minutes. So we're going to go 30 seconds on this one, squeezing the glute. Now we're going to go over the head again. So we're going up, over the head with the club, squeezing the glute, and then you're going to lean. And you may feel like this is more tight on one side than it is the other. And the majority of us, I would say all of us, are imbalanced in some ways. So like for me, for instance, this is way easier than it was on my right side. And I've had some issues with my knees and ankles on my right side, so um, you always, your body will always take the easy way out and go through path of least resistance. So, um, so you're using muscles and you're tightening muscles that you don't even think about. You don't even know you're doing it. So the next one with the hip flexors is going to be um, a deep stretch. So from here, what we're going to do is you can hold on to the golf club if you need it for balance, but we're just going to lengthen this stride. So from here, be here, before we were here, now we're going to lengthen this stride. So we're going to push the hip down. You can even use your hand and you're going to push it down this way. And we're just going to push down. You'll feel a huge stretch this way here. You can also, um, you can put this hand down for balance if you can get down there, or you can have the golf club here and hold that for balance. And we're just going to hold that for about 30 seconds again, 30 seconds. So we're pushing down, getting a big stretch hold here, and then that's it. And we'll switch sides. So from here, we're going to go, I'll do this one from the front. So we're going to squeeze the left glute, push the hip forward, and then we're just going to stretch, stretch, squeezing, pushing, feeling the stretch. Another thing guys with stretching is you want to make sure you keep breathing because if you hold your breath and I see a lot of clients holding their breath when they stretch it, your oxygen need, your muscles need oxygen to, to get that elongation or to be able to stretch. So you want to be sure you're taking in oxygen. You can even take deep breaths. Sometimes I'll have you hold the stretch for two or three deep breaths, but you never want to hold your breath. I know it, I know it feels like you can go like I'm stretching and you're holding the breath, but it, trust me, it doesn't help you that way. All right. Okay. So next thing we're going to do is we're going to work on the back of the leg, the hamstrings. So if you understand the, the hip flexors, 
from sitting all the time are shortened. The glutes are weakened because they're never firing. So the hamstring, the muscle right here, is always turned on because it's doing the job the glutes are supposed to do. And your hamstrings will get very tight. And in golf, to be able to hold your posture, if you have tight hamstring, it's gonna cause you to be pulled under this way. So we wanna make sure that we keep the hamstrings flexible. There's a lot of different ways to, to stretch the hamstrings. I'm gonna show you one right here that is one of my favorites and it's a dynamic stretch. Let me just move the, my microphone here. All right, so <clears throat> we're gonna lay down on your back. You're gonna put one foot down. You're gonna pull your other knee in and you're gonna see, you'll probably see a difference in my hamstrings because one's a lot tighter than the other. So we're gonna pull in and then you're gonna extend as far as you can as far as you can, trying to squeeze this muscle right here, and then release. So you're gonna hold it for about five seconds. Two, three, four, five, and then back. So we're just doing this one. We're gonna do this 10 times. So we're gonna go 10 reps. You're gonna pull as hard as you can, pulling this way, and then again, extending, trying to flex this muscle, and extend that hamstring. Just like that. That's good. And then we're just going to switch sides. So we're going to do the exact same thing on the other side. You're going to keep this leg straight. That's important. And now we're going to push up, stretch, pull it in. And you can do, like you'll notice if you just experiment a little bit with your foot, if you pull your toe towards your face, it's going to be a harder stretch. Because what you're doing there is you're making the calf muscle here longer than it needs to be. And it's add, adding stretch to that, to that hamstring. So we'll do a couple more of these, really pushing out. And one more. All right, so real quick, we've got the hamstrings stretched out. We've got the hip flexor stretched out. We're a little warmed up. Now I want you to go grab a chair and your golf club and then come back. So pause this. Come back, I'll wait right here. All right, so we got golf club and a chair. So you're gonna sit tall in the chair. This is by far one of my favorite stretches for the thoracic spine. So the thoracic spine is from about here to here, and that's where we get all our turn from. So to have a good mobile, mobile thoracic spine is really important in the golf swing. So we're gonna, you're gonna make sure you keep your feet together on this one. And then if you can, so I've seen a lot of clients that can't, so don't feel bad if you can't, but if you can put the club behind your shoulders comfortably, I want you to do that. If you can't, so if, like if you don't have this mobility and you can't do that, it's okay to just put your hands behind your head like this. So I'm gonna do it with the golf club. If you can't, you don't need to, you can put your hands behind your head. So what we're gonna do is sit as tall as you can. So you're gonna sit tall. You're gonna rotate as far as you can go and I want you to look and see. So your knees aren't moving and you can move your head with you, but you're gonna go as far as you can and then kind of look out your peripheral vision on your right side and look and see how far you've gone. Okay, so that's important. So here's, here's the stretch. So we're gonna turn as far as you can and you're gonna take a deep breath. You're gonna go in, exhale, and then drop your right shoulder down as far as you can. You can hold your breath on this one just a little bit, but try and keep breathing. Then you're gonna come up after you hold it for about five seconds. And now we're gonna turn as far as you can again, take a deep breath. Exhale, drop your shoulder down as far as you can. Good. Then we're gonna do one more. So we're gonna turn as far as you can, take a deep breath, and then down. Keep your knees together, don't let your lower body move. And then, and then come back to center, keep your knees together, and then turn as far as you can again and see if you've gone any farther. Guarantee you have. So I'm gonna do this one facing this way just so you see from the side. So now we're gonna go the other way. So you're gonna sit tall, sit as tall as you can. You're gonna turn in, so you're gonna turn to your left, and then from here, you're gonna drop your shoulder as far as you can go. Again, try and get a test out of your peripheral vision, see how far you've gone. Okay, now we're gonna turn as far as you can, keep your knees together, 
Deep breath. Let it out. Drop. Good. Turn. Drop. That's good. Another deep breath. Turn and then drop. And then come back to center. And now feel how far you've gone. If you can go further, guarantee you can. I love that stretch. It's a good one. I tell my clients all the time, do it before you play and then do it about after every six holes. So you're doing it three times throughout your round. That's a good one. All right, now we can get rid of the chair and the golf club. And then the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna get the lower back warmed up just a little bit. So from here, you're gonna lay down on your back and you're gonna pull your knees into your chest. So you're holding on to your knees and then we're gonna make like a rocking horse. So we're just gonna pull, you're gonna go forward and then pull back as hard as you can. Pull back as far as you can and you're just gonna roll back and forth this way and pulling that knee in and now just pull your knees in as far as you can and let your lower back stretch. I like to keep my head up while I'm doing this, but you can do, you can put your head down too if, you're, if it bothers your neck, but really just pulling your knees in as far as you can. Hold that for about 30 seconds. All right, next thing we're gonna do is called the open book. So another one of my favorites, I'm gonna move this onto this side. All right, so here we're gonna lie in what we call the hook line position. So you're gonna lay with your knees up towards your chest and the higher you can get your knees up towards your chest, the more you'll isolate your lower back. So from here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna pull the knees in, you're gonna put your hands together like this and then you're gonna lay back as far as you can, letting your eyes follow your hand, keeping the knees together. I even like to take this hand and hold my knees down. It allows me to stretch as far as I can this way and then we'll bring it back. So here, all the way back, as far as you can. One thing that I see a lot of my clients, and hopefully you can see this by the camera, is a lot of people will bring their hand down here because that's a lot easier than it is bringing it back up this way. So what I want you to do is make sure you keep your elbow bent from the start and keep the bend the whole way. And you're gonna feel a lot probably in your chest a little bit, but we're gonna do 10 repetitions with a two second hold, making sure you keep that down. So now we're gonna go on the other side and I'll do it so you're, I'm facing the other way. And this time, let me just switch sides. All right, so now we're gonna go here, but this time, if, you, if you're like Mike, it's, that, that stretch is way too easy on the other side. So this time what you're going to do is you're going to hold this knee on the ground. So you're going to keep this leg straight. This knee is going to come to the ground, so that's going to close your hips a little bit more. And you're going to make the same move. And you're going to go back as far as you can go this way. Again, following your hand with your eyes. So you're going to come all the way back to here. Keep this knee down. And stretch. So you'll find that this one's a little bit tougher because now you're getting even more stretch in that lat, lower back, chest, a little bit of everywhere. We're gonna do 10 of these. This is one, another one of my, my favorites. This is one that's easy. So the problem is with stretching and exercise or anything really is we do the things that we like and that we're good at because usually the unfortunate part is we don't need those. Those aren't the, really the stretches or the things as far as exercise goes that we need. We don't do the things that we don't like to do or that we're not good at or that we need. And that's unfortunate. And that's where a good trainer comes in because they're going to make you do what you need to do, not what you like to do. So something to think about. So if you're, if, you're, if you're going through this and you're like, man, I love that one. I'll just do more of those. That's probably not the one you need to do. You need to do the ones that you don't like because you need them. So hopefully that makes sense. All right, next thing we're gonna do, hands and knees, 
It's called a reach back. So you're going to go on your hands and knees. This one, your hip's going to want to kick out, but you want to try to avoid that. So you're going to put your hand on the top of your head. You're going to take your elbow down to the opposite knee. And then you're going to come up as high as you can. And this is where that hip is going to want to kick out this way and back. But try to keep that hip tight. So we're going to do, let's do 10 to each way. So we're going to go down and up this way. Down and up. And up. This is another really good one for that thoracic extension. Keep that knee in or that hip in. All right, so we're going to switch sides. I'll do that one from this way so you can see a different angle. Like this would be best. So I'm going to go down here. You're going to hold here. You're going to come down as far as you can. And then up. And again, just like anything, you might be like, man, I could really go far on one side. And I can't go very far on the other. And for instance, on me, my left, or my finishing side is a lot tighter and you can really see it in my golf swing. So let's go three more. That's one thing I've been working on a little bit is getting more mobility on my left side so I can finish my swing better. All right, and then let me make sure I don't miss anything. I got all those. Okay, so now we're gonna stand up and we're gonna look at the shoulder joint and the lat. The lat is the big muscle. So a lot of times I'll have people they are go, yeah, man, I can, get a, I can get a full 90 degree turn. And I'm like, okay, yeah, now, now add your arms into it. And then it's a big difference because this big lat has a lot to say when you're trying to get your arms extended in the golf swing. So let's work on those. So first thing we're going to do is external rotation. So in one of our tests, to see if you have good mobility, we look at to see if you can get this forearm even with your spine and what you want to do is you don't want to lean back because I can get a lot more if I lean back so you want to stay tall and see if you can get it so that's called external rotation if you're a right-handed golfer and you're bringing the club down and you're trying to get it on plane and you're trying to get it in here if you don't have that external rotation and you can't get it say you can only get to here it's not going to be good you're going to have a lot over the top so you have to compensate or get better mobility. So let's work on that mobility now. What we're gonna do here is we're gonna take our hands, el elbows at 90 degrees, and you're gonna push out as far as you can go. So here you're gonna really squeeze your shoulder blades. So you're gonna squeeze your shoulder blades together. Try not to arch your back too much. So, and it's just gonna look like this. We're gonna go 15, one, like just like that. Squeezing the shoulder blades, really keeping your arms in tight. Uh, and if you can, I prefer you stand against a wall to do this one, keeping your back flat against the wall and then trying to touch the wall with your thumbs. It's a really good one for that, what's called external rotation of the shoulder. So really good one here. All right, so the next one we're gonna do is for the lats and you're gonna have to get down back down on your knees again. And we're going to, from here, we're going to come here, arms straight out, and <clears throat> I call this the prayer stretch. And what you're going to keep your heels on your butt, sorry, your butt on your heels, and you're going to come down as far as you're going to reach out as far as you can. Oh, this is another one of my favorites. I don't think it's because I'm good at it, I think it's because it feels good. So we're going to squeeze the shoulder blades, and then you're going to drop your chest and chin towards the ground. I'm going to hold this for two breaths. That's good. And we'll come up out of it. And then we'll go back down one more time. Push out. You should feel a really big stretch right here in this what's called lat muscle. And then there's a progression to this one too. So hold that for a couple seconds and then a progression would be get into the stretch and then keep your left hand where it is and then reach your right hand over and then really push into that lat. 
that's going to really give you a big stretch here and then stretch here pushing out and then we'll go the other side and I'm pushing over to my left that's a great stretch for your lats and we we so we looked at the hip flexors before now we want to stretch what's called the internal external rotation of that hip joint so what we're going to do is simply so when you when you take a backswing your right hip goes through internal rotation and it's really important to be able to load that side and then when you take a downswing your left hip goes through internal rotation if you're a right-handed golfer and um, if you sway or slide there's a good chance that that internal rotation is um, is tight so what we're going to do here keep the butt cheeks down and you're just going to drop your foot in just like that and then we're going to switch sides so you're going to drop the foot in like that so we're just going to drop as far as you can we're going to do three on each side and then one two three two three good remember to keep the butt cheek down and then we're going to go into a night what's called a 90 90 and for the hips this is this is the best one you could do for your hips as long as you don't have pain in your knees so what we're doing here is so for instance i have my right knee bent in front of me and my left knee bent towards the side so what i'm stretching on my left side here is what's called the ex the internal rotation on this side so i'm trying to get my butt cheek down to the ground this way and I'm, I sh you should feel a stretch you might feel it here just because this muscle is freaking out because it doesn't know what to do and it's trying to hold you up so you could sit back with your hands a little bit but the idea is is to get as tall as you can and then on this side we're going to stretch the external rotation so we're going to hold this for 30 seconds sitting as tall as you can you can even try and reach and grab this side keeping the butt cheek down and then what you're going to do is grab or lean forward over this right foot right leg it's a lot easier to go towards your knee than it is your foot so try and get towards your foot you're going to feel a big stretch in your butt cheek on that side we're going to hold it for about 30 seconds okay next is we're going to switch sides so this one you're going to sit tall on your right side now you're stretching your internal rotation so you want to try and get as tall as you can for 30 seconds feel a big stretch in this right side if you feel any pain in your knees just go back to the windshield wipers that we were doing and you're going to hold it just like that and then on the left side now we're going to lean forward you go this way just like that and then hold And lean forward and then we're going to lean forward right over this foot just like that for 30 seconds all right and there's the your hip stretches so the last thing now that we've got so what we've got is the hips stretched out you have the shoulders the thoracic spine the lower back you should feel pretty mobile now that you're standing up and moving around now we're going to add some golf specific things into it and you're going to need your golf club again so what you're going to do is just hold on to the club right in front of you and then this is going to keep your lower body your upper body stable and you're going to turn your hips as if you were taking a downswing so you want to feel what your hips are doing in the downswing and you're going to turn them just like that keeping the shoulders square getting a nice stretch hold it for about five seconds and then we're going to take a backswing same thing lower body if you were taking a backswing loading that right leg and feeling that hip you want to try and feel your weight on the inside of your right thigh your inside of your right foot and this knee is going to stay in and you're going to turn the hip if you might feel it wanting to go like this but just try and feel that weight staying on the inside of your hip so we're going to go back and forth so we're going to go one two three one two three back and forth and then we'll go one more each side and feel those that lower body engaging and then last one we'll do is you're going to take the club if you can put it behind your back if you can't 
just hold it here on your on your chest and from here we're going to try to keep the lower body stable so I don't want the lower body to move and you're going to try and turn your shoulders so if I extended this club in front of me I would want the club to try and get behind the ball if you had a ball there and then I'm really trying to keep the lower body stable a lot of it you know, I get a lot of guys that say, man, those, those guys on TV or those girls on TV, it doesn't even look like they move their lower body. But try it. They are moving their lower body, I promise, but probably not as much as most people. So they are creating a lot of separation, but really feel like you're almost trying to push, turn your hips back that way and trying to turn your shoulders at the same time. And then we'll go the other way. And you can probably hear me. I'm holding my breath, which I shouldn't be. And you take a few deep breaths, you'll actually move better. So we're really trying to resist against that lower body and turn the upper body. So we went through a little warm-up. We went through the shoulders, the thoracic spine, the lower back, the hips, the hamstrings, and then we worked a little bit of stability in there as well. Those are my favorite stretches that I do with my clients all the time. And now you have them for yourself. Like I said before, you might find some stretches that you like, but unfortunately those probably aren't the ones that you want or you need. But if you do feel really tight and you still like them, then that's a bonus. Do them more often. Um, take what you need out of this. If your instructor tells you, man, you sway or you slide too much, look at the hips. Look at the internal external rotation. Or if you can't get a full backswing or get the club up, you might want to look at the thoracic spine and the lat stretches. So do what you can. Do them all. Go through them a few times, and I do recommend doing them at least two to three times a week or two to three times a day if you find the good ones that you really need. So um, we'll see you on the next video. Hope this helps, and if you're watching this during the, the lockdown stage, that's the main reason I recorded it. Stay safe, stay healthy, and when you get back out, hope you play some good golf.